Hey there everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Arise! What's going on here? At least he didn't hollow. Sorry. Yes. Uh. she think of putting her son to rest as work because that's the way people were made to think about every aspect of their lives i know she doesn't mean anything bad by it i know that but it looks like she went out of town to take care of her son's body that's a little concerning there's zoogles roaming around out there we should follow after her yeah we probably should Looks like she's over there. Looks like we made it here in one piece. I'm afraid not. I'm sorry.
Rinwell. Huh? Phew. Hmm? Good. That little speech you gave back there was pretty impressive, Alfin. If you call letting your emotions get the better of you impressive, sure. It made them stop fighting with each other, right? However you managed it, you knocked some sense into Rinwell and Dohalim, and that mother. Yeah. I can see my decision to travel with you was well made. Something's eating at you again, huh? I don't know if I would say that. I just... I mean... <sighs> Actually, I guess I do have one or two things on my mind. My people, we lived in hiding. So we never really experienced the full extent of Renan oppression. Not directly, anyway. After Almadria killed my mother and father, though, I... I guess that's when I started hating them so much. The Renans, I mean. But then I think of all those people who were born into slavery. The ones who never even got angry in the first place because it was all they ever knew. I hear you. Every city we've been to, it's the resistance that gets labeled the troublemakers for having the guts to do the right thing. When it comes down to it, sometimes I wonder which of us really has the better way. You can't let your anger eat away at you, Rinwell. But then again, losing your parents that way... Hell, who could really blame you for it if you did? <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is... Uh, sorry. Hell, it's hard putting this stuff into words. No, I get it. You're saying that grief and anger are different than hatred. I never thought of it like that. But hearing you say it... It makes sense. Thanks, Law. Uh, you're welcome? Well, let's get to the inn. Aw, are you tired, Poodle? You sure he's not just trying to hide from us? <laughs> okay, the inn's just right over here, then. Agreed. We'll start looking for a way out tomorrow. For now, we should spend the day resting up while we can. What?
Was that a freaking tractor beam? What's happening to Rena and Lenigus? It looks like Lenigus is transforming. But into what? What's going on? How the hell are we supposed to fight the Renans if they're packing that kind of arsenal? It seems they've broken their silence at last. My concern is that object they've dropped into the water. It's as if they're driving a literal wedge into Dana. Not just into Dana, but her own resistance, too. And what's with that beam of light coming down from above? Got any idea what that could be? Astral energy. Are you serious? All of that is astral energy? But that... It's a lot for sure. Not even all the astral energy harvested by every lord combined compares to that column. They're trying to squeeze every last bit of energy out of the planet. But why? I thought they only needed to harvest astral energy as part of the crown contest. Who cares? If we don't stop it now, the whole of Dana is going to be hollowed into oblivion. Uh, oblivion. Do you think that red woman is behind this? It certainly wouldn't surprise me. Just as the Sovereign, the Maiden, and all five Master Cores are gathered in one location, she appears out of nowhere bearing a sixth core. She then forces the two of you to help her assemble the Renis Alma. Just what kind of person is this woman? You mean you don't know her? Pardon? She was there at your palace, wasn't she? I figured you knew who she was. Are you saying I should be familiar with this woman? Well, sure. I remember seeing her with you back at Ottolina Palace several times. Everyone in the guard always wondered who she was. Now that you mention it, I remember seeing her with Balsif, too. You saw her, right, Shion? Shion? Oh, sorry, I drifted off. As far as I remember, the first time I saw her was when we ran into her in Pelegian. Seriously? How could you two not notice her before? She sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess I always figured she kept an eye on the lords for the Ren and Top Brass. You're sure you don't remember ever seeing her before? I'm certain of it. My memory has never failed me. But if it's not that, then... We'll get to the bottom of this later. Right now, that wedge is a bigger concern. Well, what are we gonna do then? We're not gonna be able to leave Ganeteros until we come up with a plan, right? Cislodia lies beyond the northern mountain range. Yeah, but we haven't found a single route through those mountains while we've been here. And we haven't gotten clues from any of the freed locals, either. Surely there must be a way through. This realm can't have been completely isolated from the rest of the outside world for 300 years. Volron may have simply sealed and hidden it. Okay, then let's try asking the townspeople again if they know anything. Who knows? We might have missed something the first time around. Sounds good to me. Better that than trying to build a boat from scratch. Let's start searching. That must be Rena's true power. I imagine there would be something, but not to this extent. What's gonna happen now? We ask around. Let's do what we can. Hey, when that wedge dropped down on Dana, did anyone else see any weird light shoot out with it? Indeed. As I recall, it was four lights, each one a different color and going in a separate direction. That's what I saw, too. What were they? Hold on. A lot just happened here, so let's take a minute. For now, let's focus on one thing at a time. I bet the whole of Dan is losing its mind right about now. And just when we'd finished liberating all the realms. So much for things getting somewhere close to normal. It's too calculated. As if whoever's behind all this was watching us. The people of Pelegian seem pretty unfazed given the circumstances. They've yet to get the full range of their emotions back. Maybe it's for the best. Can you imagine the panic otherwise? Yeah. We wouldn't have been able to leave. That's for sure. Whatever Lenigus is planning, it's a fair bet this wedge they've sent down is just the beginning. Even now, they're stealing away Dana's astral energy as we speak. Come on, we don't have much time. But how can we stop that thing? Take a boat out to it and get inside it, maybe? Oh, 
Also, I don't think I remember ever seeing that red woman before. Or did we see her? Like, back when we fought Balsef. I... I don't know. Well, that's a start. Where are these Forland Mountains exactly? Those are the mountains you encounter if you walk deep enough into the Lavtu marshlands. I don't remember there being any sort of path like that around there. It's possible we overlooked something before. It wouldn't hurt to look again. Aha! I guess it's safe to teleport to it. I guess we won't miss anything. I'm assuming it'll treat us like we're just entering the area. Armored soldiers! Some of Volron's former guards. Let's take them out quick before things get messy. Oh, glory unto Volron! Lay down your arms and no one has to get hurt. Silence! Traitors like you shall never walk free. I knew you were stubborn, but you don't have to be so damn dramatic. What's with the hole here? Is that supposed to be their hideout? It doesn't look like it's freshly dug, whatever it is. Maybe it's the entrance to a path to Cislodia. <sighs> Everything all right? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Let's go. I don't know when it happened, but we sure are hauling a lot of stuff these days. I was just thinking the exact same thing. Glad to hear I'm not the only one. We should probably clear some stuff out, like our old weapons we're not using anymore. They must be in pretty bad shape by now. No way. Those are still good as new with a little polishing. If anything, I'd say all our armor is what's weighing us down. But that armor is also still good once you fix it up. Besides... Better to have too much armor than too little. You can trust me on that one. Well, what about all these dumb old antiques we're lugging around? If we sell those off, that should lighten our load. 
Simpletons such as yourself who can't appreciate the true worth of such things is how precious art vanishes from history. Pretty art's not gonna save you in a fight, man. Stop it, you guys. This is no time to... All I really meant to say is, you can tell how much we've been through by everything we're carrying around. Honestly, that's all. Oh. My deepest apologies. It appears that I may have rather overreacted. Yeah, I guess it's only natural we'd have so many souvenirs by now. I might have been out of line, too. I guess all this stuff really is a sign of how far we've come together. Yeah, every little piece is its own treasure filled with memories. <laughs> I can feel my power growing! I wonder if you only get that skit if you hoard everything throughout the game. Tell me, Alfin. Wherever did you learn how to wield a sword? I was wondering the same thing too, actually. I'm guessing you knew how to fight before you met the Crimson Crows, right? I used to be a soldier who served a Danon master. I never saw the guy's face, but I still fought for him because he was my employer. Looking back, it wasn't all that different from being a slave. A Danon master? That must have been before the Renans brought you to Lenigus 300 years ago. You must fight using real Danon techniques, then. Really? We used to have our own sword arts? There's a lot of our own history we've lost since the Renans first invaded. It's not all magic and art. I'm sure it includes things like sword styles, too. It's incredible, and also a little surreal to see those arts still survive after all this time. Not only that, but I first learned these moves while serving one ruler. Only to end up turning my sword on the ruling class altogether. Pretty ironic when you think about it. I apologize if I dredged up unfortunate memories for you. Nah, we're good. It's in the past now. All we ever did in those days was stir up trouble. You're using those skills for a good cause now. It's not all bad. I suppose this is what people mean when they say that every cloud has its silver lining. Exactly. He's using those sword skills to make the world better. Could be a lot worse. True enough. I will stop worrying about mentioning it then. All right, let's see what this is. This place is rather gloomy. Why don't you lighten the mood for us while we're here then? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. No wonder we couldn't manage to find them. They've been holed up here all this time, hiding. The remnants of Volron's forces. You think they were planning an ambush on Pelegian? Possibly. Then again, knowing how blind their devotion is, maybe they were just waiting. Waiting? For Volron, you mean? Even though we already defeated him? But, yes, I suppose you're right. For these guys, that would just be a technicality. They act more like worshippers than subjects. They're probably still in denial that he was overthrown in the first place. Either that, or they were biding their time until the next crown contest. Either way, their allegiance is to their lord. Who they're convinced and expectant will return. So in the meantime, they wait patiently in preparation for the day that he finally does. That's way more than just loyalty. It's no less than total subjugation. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure how long this dungeon's going to be, but I think we should probably save it for the next episode. You know, I remember in Cislodia, there was like a drawbridge or something that we never got past because it was raised, and there was like an area on the other side of that. That's probably what this goes to. Anyway, see y'all next time.